My big dream is that I want to be a lawyer because I want to change a lot of things in my community, also in my country. I used to say that I want to be the president of Guatemala, and that is true. We are powerful, so we can use our voice to change the world. Mi sueño más grande es poder ayudar a las personas con problemas mentales y ser una gran psicóloga. As the high school director of Maya Impact School, my dream is that all of our students will finish high school successfully to continue with higher education in the field of their choice and to occupy key positions of leadership that will impact and benefit the Mayan communities and lead the transformation of Guatemala. When you invest in Maya, you invest in education, empowerment, and young leaders who will ignite positive change. Join us on October 9th in this conversation with Alex Fondor to discuss women leading sustainable change. I am Claudia Serat, my student in Maya Impact School. Hello, I am Mr. Rosen, student at Maya Impact School. Join us this October night in a conversation with Alex Han. I am Linda Pablo, a student from Maya Impact School, and in this conversation we will meet an exponent, an environment activist, and um, make change. I am Maribel Mendoza, student at Impact School. Uh, join us on October 9 to learn more about Alexander. Hello, I am Marin Kuhn, a student at My Impact School. In this conversation with Alex Honnold, I want to talk about challenges he faces and the actions he takes to achieve his dreams. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to all of you who are joining us today for a discussion on sustainability, personal impact, and confronting big challenges. I am Lydia Oshi, the Director of Special Projects at the Maya Impact School based in Guatemala. This, this weekend, October 11th, is the International Day of the Girl. This year's theme is My Boys Over Equal Future to celebrate the power of girls to use their voices to create a more equitable and sustainable future. We're excited to host a conversation between five Maya girl pioneers of the Impact School and Alex Honnold. This is the first time girl pioneers are doing a live interview in English. We're so proud of how much they have accomplished and how much preparation they have done for this event. And before we get started with the conversation, I want to invite each participant to introduce themselves. Please share your name, how are you feeling today, your biggest dream, and one thing you are already doing to protect and support environmental sustainability. Esther, would you like to start us off? Um, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Esther. I am really happy and a little bit nervous to be here. Uh, my biggest dream is that I want to be in a political position in the future and create change. And for sustainability, I am studying and sharing what I know with my family. And the most important thing is that I'm seeing myself as a solution. And I would like to invite Linda. Hello, my name is Linda. I'm really excited to be in this conversation. And my biggest dream is to study communication science. And something that I'm doing for a sustainable environment is that all my knowledge and learnings, I uh, share all those things to my family and friends too. And I want to invite Marlene. Hello, my name is Marlene. I am happy to be here. My biggest dream is to help develop women to be leaders and show we are the solution. One of the things that I do to the environment is that I push my trash in the correctly place. I will invite Claudia Marisol. 
Hello everyone, my name is Marisol. I'm hoping for today. Uh, my biggest dream is to study agroforestry and engineering uh, to help people through the project uh, for sustainability and the environment. I implement a uh, community garden in my town. Um, I will invite Maribel Mendoza. Hello everyone, my name is Maribel. I am very happy and anxious today. My biggest dream is to be a touristic guide. So I want to protect the environment so that others can enjoy it. I will invite Alex. Hello, <clears throat> uh, I'm Alex Honnold. Uh, nice to meet you all. I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to be able to, to speak with the girl pioneers today. Uh, my biggest dream is to, to be a good rock climber basically. And uh, for the environment, I'm trying to work on promoting renewable energy through the Hanna Foundation. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your inspiring dreams with us. I know that if we work together, we will achieve a more equitable and sustainable future for everyone. And uh, for you who are watching, you might be wondering how this group, group of people came together for a conversation on peers education, sustainability, and environmental leadership. Well, let me tell you, uh, Maya is the first school in Central America designed, led, and run by indigenous women from these communities. And we are committed to bring high quality education and holistic education to indigenous girls in Guatemala. In 2019, we received the Site Sustainability Prize for being the most sustainable, innovative, and inspirational secondary school in the Americas. We are so excited for this and happy. And this year, we are all very honored that we have partnered with Alex and the, uh, the, and the Hona Foundation to install solar panels on the Impact School and create a more sustainable world. We're right now and currently creating a, a sustainability curriculum and also working a, a curriculum that will be providing workshops on sustainability topics to parents. We're almost and very close to become like 100% power. And this is thank you to this, um, to the effort of the Honor Foundation. And Alex, for this, I would have, uh, can, can you share briefly with us what the vision of your foundation is? Well, the, the, the vision of the Honor Foundation is just to support renewable well, to support solar projects for a more equitable world so exactly what you're describing using renewable energy to uh, make sure that the world is a fair place or as fair as possible it's pr pretty simple really <laughs> just supporting solar projects around the world thank you alex and how many projects do you have right now uh, yes ar around the world the world so I think right now we maybe have eight new projects, projects like what we're doing with, with Associates of Maya uh, and the Impact School. Uh, and then we have maybe a half dozen sort of ongoing partners and projects that we've worked with in the past, people whose work we're still supporting. So uh, so somewhere in the you know 10 to 15 range of various things going on around the world. Thank you. You're really doing an inspiring and uh, powerful work and it's very helpful to Asociación Maya. So I'm sure it is the same for all the organizations that you are supporting. And uh, we are really grateful for we for being one of your grantees this year. Well, and to uh, get this conversation started, we wanna hear about uh, your life and how this how has it been changed in your book, you mentioned you started free solo climbing because you were afraid to use your voice and ask others uh, if you could climb with them. Now you're you're like a, a famous climber in uh, with a massive a platform that you use to advocate for protecting and preserving the environment. At Maya, we call this vocal empowerment. So uh, how did you go from being, as you mentioned, a shy kid to a spokesman for the environment, for the environment, and how did you find your voice? Honestly, it took me a very long time, and I have to say I'm very impressed by the girl pioneers and the fact that they can have a conversation like this with me in English because, uh, you know, I studied Spanish in school, but I was always much too afraid to actually speak to anybody in Spanish. And uh, it's taken me many years of being forced to do public events uh, as a professional climber, having to go in front of people and speak about my experiences. 
And after many years of practice, I've slowly become a little bit more comfortable. But, uh, you know, like everything in life, it's just been practice for me. And, and I have to say, it's very inspiring to see these young women uh, able to just, you know, perform in English uh, in, in such, a, such a challenging way. It's, uh, it's something that I, I couldn't have done when I was younger. Uh, I agree with you uh, because we, we need to practice a lot to discover our voice and use it with the word. Um, I agree. Uh, this is our third uh, language, so it is like uh, <laughs> it is really proudly for us because we speak it. And in our family, we are like the first uh, girls to, to talk in English. And I, yeah, I make a connection with you because I find my voice too. Uh, first in reading because I like to do this and then share it with my friends and with my family. And first I use my voice to transform it myself and then to try to make my family to share with them the importance of education. And when they understand this, it was like uh, the most important thing that I've done with my voice. Mm. Like Esther says, uh, we are like the first girls that we are like in the meeting and talking in English. So it's like a big experience for us. And I am also like all the knowledge is like the ability to speak in English. And um, I also am teaching that something works to my family also so they can learn it. And so that's uh, how I'm using my empowerment. Uh, also, me, I am the first girl in my family to talk in English. Uh, this is my third language, and I have a connection with Linda. I sometimes, in the afternoon, I share uh, with my family, and I teach to them uh, some words in English, some phrases that uh, it helps to them to understand a little English. Yes. Vocal empowerment, it's uh, an important aspect of uh, work at my organization. We believe that world needs empowered women to start taking decisions for, their, for themselves, for their families, and also to leave their communities and uh, our country out of poverty, but we need to work together. And now I'm also delighted to, to uh, ask some questions and I'm also inviting all our audience to, to send their questions and we would have some time at the end of the session to respond to them. There are questions to Alex or questions to our girl pioneers. And Linda, would you like to get us started with the first question, please? Yeah, Alex, I have a question for you. Uh, when was the first time you saw all the negative negative impact that humanity is having on the environment. Um, and when did you realize that you could do something about it? That's a, that's a big question. I think that as a professional climber, uh, I've been on many expeditions to parts of the world where it's, it's clear to see the changing impact, uh, to, to see the changing climate, basically seeing uh, glaciers retreating in the mountains, uh, see, seeing forests changing. You know, even places close to home, uh, I grew up going to Yosemite National Park in California. Uh, and over the 35 years that I've been alive, I've seen the forest change very much in Yosemite. Uh, you know, certain types of trees have died because of new insects. Uh, you know, they've all been cut down and removed. And so, you know, fundamentally, the park has changed. And so I think that the more important thing for me was... Uh, becoming more aware of those changes because it's one thing to see them, but it's another thing to read books and actually understand them on a deeper level because I think it's very easy to go as a tourist to a place like Yosemite and just see a beautiful forest and not really notice that it's changing right before your eyes. And so uh, for me, uh, I think the big step was to, to read many books about climate change, to read about the environment, basically to learn more about the world that I live in and then, and then start trying to take some action, which, uh, you know, I mean, I've taken various actions, but probably the most meaningful is the, the work of the Honnell Foundation. Oh, wow. I'm, that's a good point. I'm agree with you, Alex. And 
I saw the, that problems about environment here in Guatemala too. Uh, specifically in my community, I saw that we don't have water every day, and for me it's difficult because with we with uh, we don't have water, we can do uh, some things like wash clothes, take a shower, and if the water is uh, contaminated, we can do. Um, it's most difficult for me because we can drink that water that we have, and. I will. I want to invite Marlene to to this question too. I agree with all of your ideas that we have a, a biggest uh, change in our communities, different uh, change that we have for the environment. In my case, in my community, the first uh, change that I saw for humanity uh, cause is that. Uh, they start to cut and burn a lot of tree, trees and it made filled me a little angry because they just cut but they didn't plant the trees that they cut so one of the actions that I took is that I start to plant some trees in my house in a little space that I had in my house uh, also I plant some flowers and sometimes I plant some vegetables Uh, thank you for sharing those impacts and what are doing for. I think that it's very important to see first and when you see this, you start to act and you have, you have done this. And now uh, you, Alex, as individual, how do you recommend to people to envelop the uh, environment? Uh, say again, how do I encourage people to do what with the environment? To involve in creating a positive impact in the environment? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I think that change is so much depending on where you live and what the requirements of your local community are. Uh, you know, I mean, hearing uh, the, the, the challenges in Guatemala are completely different than, than the environmental challenges that my community here in Las Vegas in the desert in, in the Western US has. And so I think that an important thing when addressing environmental issues is to start with where you are and what you're capable of doing and then try to build community around that, you know, build support where, where you are for, for what you can do. Um, you know, I mean, the world is, is a very big place and there's obviously no one solution to, to solving, solving problems. I think it's important to, to communicate with, with the people around you and, and figure out what's best for that region. Thank you, microphone. Yes, I think your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I really agree with you, Alex, because we have to have a critical thinking and think about the consequences of our action. Are those negative or positive? And if those are negative, what we can do to change that? And if are positive, what we can do to still be like that? And also, like you said, start to inform yourself about what we can do in our community and start like make those little changes. Mm -hmm. I really agree with what you said. And I, I, t I want to invite people too to get information and to get information and believe that with one action we can change a lot. Because we used to think that one action can't change anything, but I believe that we can. So I invite people to give the first step to, to other people, follow them. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you all for sharing this actionable recommendations. I love the idea that we can be, we are all part of the solutions, uh, like every step counts. And even if it's small or if it's big, but we need to be working as a team. And now I would like to invite Maribel to ask another question. Thank you, Lydia. My question is how does education gear can create a sustainable future? Alex, maybe you can start and my classmates can respond. Uh, how education can help with a sustainable future? Is that, uh, educating girls, yes. Yeah. Yeah, educating yeah. Girls. Well, yeah, educating anybody for sure, but, but you know, young women make up half of the world. And certainly uh, I would say the more important 
half <laughs> you know basically the the more mature the more educated the the better half i think of uh my wife and i'm sort of i'm like oh yeah she's definitely the uh decision maker in the family here and and so i think it's yeah i mean educating women is is uh, you know transformative for society basically it's like you can't have a a fair society moving forward without without educating women um i mean just being able to to make informed decisions about their own health and families and and hopefully to be able to lead their societies i mean uh i know this is a little bit off uh, off script but uh you know when you look at politics in the us right now i mean i think we need a few more educated women making intelligent decisions because obviously things have gone totally insane and we could use a few uh you know more compassionate thoughtful leaders you know, and, and, I, and I think that, that uh, you know, hopefully young women from, from uh, you know, the My Impact School can, can eventually become those leaders. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And that's really true that one thing really important is the leadership and empowerment. And now in the school, we're learning a lot about this. And we are approved that with education and with the opportunity, we can create a sustainable future. And I can give you an example. It's a, we have a project, we are a project that is called the Gord Effect, where we learn a lot. We learn about our leadership, about the importance of our voice, our values and rights. And then we can replicate this with other generations, uh, even if in the future someone, someone of us wants to have a son, so it can replicate this with them. Or right now with our family and with other friends that are not in the school. And another project that we have that is work for sustainability, it's an organic garden uh, where we pr produce our own food and then we take it and we use it in the cafeteria and it is healthy without chemicals. Even my classmate uh, Marisol, she has an incredible project about this and she's replicating it with families and maybe she wants to share more about this with us. Yes, thank you Esther and yes, this, this question is very hard and it's not common in, in, in our country but it's very important to talk about that um, because the career can create sustain, sustainable and they have more knowledge. They, ha, they can partic participate. Um, also, uh, let me share you that last year I won the first place of a, a project in AI Impact 2019 Hospital Voices of Guatemala. And my project is employment uh, gardening on uh, with family in my town to decrease my to decrease malnutrition and uh, e sustainability because I give work workshop with them and also use product chemic we just we don't just uh, product chemics with them and it's all it's only organic and that help them to have healthy life and especially their, um, their son and daughter. Yes, thank you so much for sharing and thank you for our audience who is joining. This is uh, Colegio Impacto uh, from Guatemala and Alex Honold. And uh, yes, I just want to emphasize that how much these students have grown and how much they have achieved during these four years. They are fourth grade, 10th graders uh, students at the Maya Impact School. They have grown so much. And I would like to point out Marisol's project. And this is something that is being very useful and very important right now for food security. She's having, she's actually training uh, families in her community and making sure people in these families actually have uh, food uh, to go throughout this pandemic because like a, a lot of people have lost their jobs. So if we see this, like this is a huge example of how young people can take leadership leadership positions and actually start making changes in their communities and also like i know that some of our students and uh, I, I would say maybe most of our students and most of us we have done uh, some things for the very first time like i know that they are the first one to speak a third language they are learning english they are speaking ling english and they are also sharing this at home with their families and so everyone at this event, I'm also sure that it has done something for the first time. 
So girls, uh, I would like also to know uh, if you can share with us what has been these things and a big one thing that, that you have done that you are the first one and it's really bold and uh, how it made you feel. And for this, I would like to invite Maribel. Uh, hello, and um, I'm agree with you, Lydia. I'm the first one in my family to speak English. And with that language, I can meet a lot of people in different countries and know about them. And also, I'm the first one to study to my family, and always I use my voice to help them in their work. Esther, can you go, please? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, I want to share uh, about my first experience uh, of uh, traveling. And I think in our culture, it's uh, really weird to someone go out to uh, the country. And more if you are young or, or if you are indigenous or women, it is completely uh, weird. And, and I did it. And it was a great experience because I meet a lot of people around the world and they were, and there was really inspired. And I, I do a lot of connection with these people and I sometimes I feel like a little scary, but it was really exciting too because I learned a lot and this knowledge is I still use it in my diary life. And when I share it with my family, they feel like really proudly of me and it is like really a, a good emotion for me. So it is incredible to do first things. And I will invite uh, Alex. I'll t I, I don't even know what to say because, uh, you know, for me, the, the firsts that I'm proud of are all climbing, climbing things, but in a way they don't really matter compared to the experiences that, that you, you guys are describing. Uh, you know, I think being the first in your family to, to get a good education and to learn new languages, it has such a big impact on your community you know, for me to be the first person to go rock climb something, you know, it's it's fun for me, it's it's very satisfying, but it doesn't really matter in the way that what you're describing matters. Um, I don't know, I mean, it feels a little bit silly to, to talk about rock climbing compared to the the challenges that you guys are overcoming and, and, uh, and, and working on, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think actually I'm the first person in my family to not get an education. <laughs> because uh, I, I didn't go to university because I was rock climbing. And, uh, you know, so I've always been a little bit embarrassed that I'm the only person in my family that, that didn't go to university. But uh, it's, it's very inspiring to see that, that all of you, you know, will be the most educated members of your family and that you will be leading in your communities. Uh, yes, I agree with all my classmates. We have uh, we have a um, different event has been the first to something. Uh, when you, I have a question with uh, Alex. To Alex, when mm -hmm. you are about to confront a new challenge, you are standing in front of a new rock uh, wall that has new uh, been climbing before, uh, or you are presenting a new sustainability project for our for your community that is your mental process to prepare for uh, that for the challenge uh, what skill will you you use uh, I, my mental process normally has to do with preparation i mean it's basically all training and practicing for the thing that i'm going to do and so uh, you know, I never know what the next challenge will be exactly, but I do know if I've put in all the work that I'm capable of, you know, if I've done everything that I can to prepare, then I know that whatever the challenge is, uh, I will be as ready as I possibly can for that challenge. And whether that's projects with sustainability through my foundation or whether that's big climbing projects, if, if I know that I have done the work and, and done as much as possible when I show up for that challenge, then I feel much more confident and I'm and I'm more able to, to take on the challenge. And I agree with you, Alex, that uh, I'm too 
Uh, if I have to confront a challenge, I need to be resilient. That is one of the competencies here in Maya. It's one of my favorite competencies because I I think that it competence, it helped me uh, all the year and it helped me to achieve my dreams too. And I need to have uh, my emotions controlled that I need to have a positive mind. I need to I need to think uh, positive, and also I need to uh, take this like an opportunity and go ahead. Uh, yes, I agree with or with uh, with you <laughs> and <laughs> fears of or I give one example when I start my project I visit a family and a, and one person uh, of the family said to my father uh, that if her uh, daughter was a, a boy can do best and is a and it's very hard to listen to that because my community is very machismo and discriminated uh, with uh, girls. Um, but uh, but Maya give us a competence we, that we have uh, with, with that we have perseverance and also can take also my community when when a girl uh, take or have a shovel that they discriminate that and all but uh, Maya <clears throat> but, but but Maya have um, a competence with uh, we achieve our goals and um, but and we when we have obstacles uh, but we have a, a but we need to uh, to be excellent to be to be uh, perseverant and also uh, we have to need to teamwork. Thank you, everyone, again for sharing. Uh, I think it's really important to share this kind of unique experiences because, like such in your case, Alex, you you're the first one to climb the El Cap uh, solo, and I know as a matter of fact as well that a lot of people it's very risky, and a lot of people have also like uh, unfortunately lost their lives in, in this event or trying. And also for our students, there are so many challenges that they have to overcome, but also they have shared like the ways or the tools that they are using. And for this, like the competencies of Maya are really important because it, it helps them to develop, uh, to know themselves, to develop strength, uh, and also to continue because this is going to be a, a really hard journey uh, to be the first one in doing something different. It's very challenging as well. And, uh, but yes, so we also know that we're in celebration of uh, International Day of the Girl. And for this, I would like to invite Marlene. I know Marlene has a question. Please, Marlene. Just like Lydia says, uh, this weekend is International Day of the Girl. And I have a question for you, Alex. What uh, is your message for all the girls over the world who want to create a positive impact? That's that's a big question. I think uh, I guess my message is just to to have that impact. I don't know. I mean, hearing uh, Mari Soul's story, well, and hearing all of your stories about the challenges that you face in your community to to make an impact. You know, the the first thought that came to mind to me was that sometimes uh, sometimes I enjoy the challenge. You know, I know that that you're facing many obstacles and that, and that it's difficult in some ways, but sometimes. I think that having those obstacles can be very motivating. Um, I know that for me, when something is challenging, it makes me want to try harder and to, you know, to sort of prove that it's possible and to prove that I can do the thing, even even if it is very challenging. And so I think, um, you know, I can imagine that if you're the first in your community to lead in a certain way, sometimes you just want to prove to people that you're capable, uh, you know, and, and I think that if you can harness that motivation and use it to help you excel, I think that that, that can be, uh, you know, it can be a, an important way to, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, this is all a little bit off the top of my head, but I just know that as a climber, I've 
tried to harness motivation in different ways. You know, like if, if a friend of mine does something better, then, then I'll try to harness that competition and try to try to use that to be an even better climber myself. And so I think that that if you try to take all the challenges and obstacles in front of you and use them to your benefit to be an even better student, to be an even better leader, uh, you know, I mean, those challenges don't have to hold you back. They can help you be even stronger. Alex, I really agree with you because uh, the message that I want to give is that girls, you don't have to be afraid to use your voice and you have to trust in you that believe that your voice can make change like my classmate says, like through create projects or like you say, I don't know, be a leader in our communities and like that start make change. Mm -hmm. I agree with your opinion, and I want to say that we need to seize the time, the opportunity that we get, and use our voice because uh, men and women we have the same rights. Mm. I really agree with you because we we can use our voice to you to do it. And for all the girls, I just want to say to that they have to believe in their selves and do what they are, for what they feel patient, even if it is through art, through writing or through sports, because um, I, maybe I'm not a lover of sports, but I'm a lover of writing and this make me happy and makes me achieve my dreams. So I invite all the girls to do the same, to do what they want to and believe in their self. Thank you, Alex, Linda, Maribel, and Esther for sharing this powerful messages. And actually, Esther, I also feel like she's being too humble. She was one of the team members who represented Maya in 2019 to and flew to Abu Dhabi. And she actually, she was the, the one who actually received the Sayed Sustainability Prize. So she represented the Maya organization. And this is this is like a huge and, and moment for us because it represented that um, I might I don't want to be biased, but I definitely believe that the women can create this uh, transformational change that we're talking about, and we are the solutions. And so many times we're blamed to be the problem, but I do believe, and I'm sure that this young generation are going to be the solution. And for this, uh, I'm also, I would like to invite all the people who are watching and you feel if you feel inspired by this uh, girl pioneers, we're also inviting you to go to our website www.mayaimpact.org slash donate and you can make this and you can be part of this uh, huge project and create a sustainable and a better uh, community and a better country here in Guatemala. And we have uh, still some time, uh, and I would like to, I would like to ask an, uh, Alex another question. I know that you have started a new program, and it's called the Community Fund. And I would like you to, I would like to ask you to share a bit uh, about uh, with our audience uh, the purpose and why you started this new project. Well, first, may I just say that. Uh, I think you're all being a little too humble. I mean, the, the Said Sustainability Award uh, really is maybe the biggest prize in the world for this, this type of work. Um, so I think for, for, uh, for Esther to go to Abu Dhabi and receive a prize like that, I mean, it's, it's pretty big deal. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm very personally impressed by that. And that's a, that's a big journey for anybody. And I think going to, uh, going to the Middle East like that, it really is one of the more you know exotic parts of the world i mean it must have been an, an incredible adventure for you to to travel like that and, and see uh, somewhere that feels so totally different um so so let me just say congratulations to to everybody at at, at my impact school for um for an award like that i mean it's it's incredible work um with that said uh you know lydia as you said uh the Hanum foundation recently launched the the community fund uh, which is a pretty simple idea. It's just something I thought of this summer. It's basically to use solar on local nonprofits uh, to help them do their their work better. Um, so we're focusing specifically on on uh, Black and Indigenous and people of color led nonprofits throughout the U.S. Uh, so that it has a focus on equity. 
and and helping them do the work in their communities that that they're already doing, but just you know basically saving them money through through solar. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple idea, but it just seemed like one of those ideas that that should be implemented. You know, every once in a while you think something up and you're like, I wonder why the world doesn't work that way, and then you just have to make it happen. You know, you just you're like, oh, this seems like something that should exist, so you just have to make it exist. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alex. And I know we have a couple of questions from the audience that we would like to uh, to address. And I'm, in, I'm inviting any of you group pioneers to ask uh, these questions to Alex. Oh, we lost Linda. Yeah, I, th I think we lost Linda. Uh, oh, yeah. The question was, um, question of the audience was, why are you intellectual partnership important? So I think uh, intercultural partnerships, I think are important really because you never know exactly what you're going to get from them. Um, you know, I mean, just this conversation with, with all you young women, for example, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what I would, you know, I thought I would just be doing an interview because I do many interviews and I talk to many people. But uh, as it turns out, I'm actually incredibly inspired by, by all these young women and, and the work that you're doing. And, you know, the, the thing is, I think that you never really know where motivation will come from in life and where inspiration comes from. And so I think that the, the beauty of intercultural partnerships is that you never really know who you're going to inspire or like what kind of ideas are going to, to result from them. And, and I think that's kind of a, an argument for diversity in general is you never, you know, basically it's good to be surrounded by different ideas and different, different people because you never know what you're going to learn and how that's going to help your life. Thank you, Alex. Yes, there is another question. I'm inviting another group pioneer to ask this question to, to Alex, please. Um, now we want to read some questions from the audience. So we can put this on the screen. And um, there, there's one. How did Alex learn about Maya? So, uh... I think I learned about Maya just through our core fund this year. I think Maya applied for a grant for the solar project for putting solar onto the school. And, uh, and thankfully we, we got your grant and, you know, everyone at the Honol Foundation was incredibly inspired by the work that, that Maya is doing. And, and thankfully we funded the project. And now here I am having a, a wonderful conversation with all the girl pioneers. And Lydia was kind enough to join me for an Instagram live earlier this summer in, in which we talked about the work that Maya is doing. And so, um, yeah, so basically M Maya applied for a grant through the Hano Foundation. We supported the work. And then now through a series of, of conversations, I've got to learn uh, more about the work and, and meet many of the, the people involved. It's, uh, it's very inspiring. Thank you, Alex. Speaking about this, yes, I'm, I'm asking you uh, because I originally thought or I, I, I believe I understood that you were coming down to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Are this, is this in your plan? Are you still coming down to Guatemala because this will be like a nice event as well? Or if you have identified any rock to climb in Guatemala? So I guess there are two questions here. Uh, so, well, right now, we're probably not allowed to go to Guatemala, right? I think uh, because of the the political response in, in the U.S. and COVID, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're not allowed to leave the country, which is uh, slightly embarrassing and, and slightly sad. But um, but no, I, as you said, there's actually very little rock in Guatemala. So uh, no, I would love to see the work that you guys are doing someday and, and visit the school. But um, I think the only thing to climb in Guatemala are volcanoes. I think it's more like hiking and scrambling in the in the jungle. Um, though I would love to visit someday as a tourist, just because, uh, you know, I've never really been to, I've, you know, I haven't traveled much in Central America and it would be, it would be beautiful to see and to see the history there. Okay. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, any other question for the audience? Tim, do we have any other question? Oh yes. I still see another question. I think, uh, yes. Okay, Marisol, can you ask this question, please? Uh, 
Uh, what uh, the question for the audience is what helps you move from a uh, fear to reaching your goals? That's a, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is basically just practice or preparation. I think that uh, especially physical fear, as, as a climber, you often are, are afraid of a physical act. And I think that the easiest way to overcome that fear is just to, to practice it over and over uh, until you sort of desensitize yourself to the fear. Um, you know, that's maybe not the, the same approach for all kinds of fear. But I think in general, if you're very prepared for something and if you put in the time and the effort and the, the energy, uh, it's just going to feel less scary. You know, I mean, any, any big challenge, if you work at it enough, eventually starts to feel smaller. And so I think as the challenge feels smaller, it's less scary. Thank you, Alex. Yes, yeah, something um, I see that there is another, I think we have enough time to, to answer this question. Uh, Marisol, can you ask this question, please? Yes, of course. <laughs> Uh, has an athlete, what is the value of your girls and women in uh, finding great, greater physical aw awareness and strength? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I can't answer for all the, the young women here, but I do think that uh, feeling strong and con basically feeling strong helps with confidence. I think that it's much easier to go through the world uh, you know, and take challenges face on, you know, to just feel confident if you know that your physical body is is capable of, of facing challenges. You know, uh, I don't know, it's, it's in some ways that's that's overly simplistic, but I think that that with, you know, fitness and, and physical strength, you're more prepared to go into the world and, and take on challenges. As it certainly, uh, it makes it easier to you know, stand up straight and and believe in yourself. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Alex. Uh, we actually were very inspired by your um, by your your documentary. I know that, that you actually won an Oscar, and that's also a huge. I mean, a huge uh, accomplishment. You are very humble, very very unique, very transparent. And yes, I think it's also very important that your foundation, the foundation, uh, the work that your foundation is doing in reaching these communities in uh, in Guatemala, we're very grateful for, for your support. And also, like, we know that you are an excellent reader. We we kind of uh, read a little bit about you, uh, that you, are, you, you like to read a lot, and uh, you are an extraordinary example, and I truly believe, like, all our... Pioneers are also setting examples, and that's what we want for Guatemala: like people to make these changes and work together, either as an individual or also like uh, these corporations. We also know that big corporations have like a, a huge responsibility with the environment. But yes, we need to work together. So that's all for this time. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for being part again for this conversation and for investing in Maya this year. We're truly grateful for being your partner. Thank you, Marisol, Linda, Maribel, Esther, Marlene, for all the hard work that you put into preparation for this event. I know this is the first time we you are doing this. And thank you everyone that has tuned in today. Our work is possible for, because of our global network of support, all the donors, all the organizations that have partnered with us, all the parents that also work with us and all our students. Thank you for taking the time to be in here. And uh, I mean, thank you so much for all this work and thank you team as well for being here today with us and have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. My big dream is that I want to be a lawyer because I want to change a lot of things in my community, also in my country. I used to say that I want to be the president of Guatemala, and that is true. We are powerful, so we can use our voice to change the world.
Mi sueño más grande es poder ayudar a las personas con problemas mentales y ser una gran psicóloga. As the high school director of Maya Impact School, my dream is that all of our students will finish high school successfully to continue with higher education in the field of their choice and to occupy key positions of leadership that will impact and benefit the Mayan communities and lead the transformation of Guatemala.